Sports Talk and Entertainment. It's Tuesday. It's Wacky Tuesday. It's giant land, and you don't know what the heck is going on. And it's things that make you go, mm, because there's so much going on in giant land. It's just, it's just, I don't know. Just weird stuff here. And the weird season just gets weirder by the moment. And it's, you know, and I love it because I don't get it. And I had a coach once tell me, you know what, son, you're not here to get it. So I guess I'm not here to get it. But you know what? There, it's just I'm tired of hearing about the injuries because it's next man up. And if you don't agree with the philosophy or the term next man up, you've never played any type of competitive sport. Tired of hearing about how we would do better if Daniel Jones was here. Daniel Jones has not shown a progression. progression. I'm tired of hearing about all the issues. I'm tired of hearing about Dave Gellman. I'm tired of hearing about Joe Judge. And the fact that John Mara allegedly, I'm going to use the word allegedly, came out and said, we're going to keep Judge because it reminds me of Belichick and Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells in 83 went 3, 12, and 1, went 9, and 7, and 84 and made the playoffs. His team showed a progression. Joe Judge's teams show a regression. But the one thing we're going to have looking forward to for what Joe Judge in year three, if it does happen, is those wonderful press conferences. Uh, uh, Coach Judge, Coach Judge, what is improving on the team this year? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you, Coach Judge. That's what we're going to get to look forward to. He's not Belichick. There is no, there is no bright side to this team. There, there is limited talent on this team. There's no salary cap. And, and, could, and could the Kevin Abrams mistake be far behind if they decide to keep Joe Judge? You know, Mr. Kevin here, he runs the salary cap. <laughs> he runs it. You know that. People, do, do, do people know that? He runs the salary cap. He was the cap analyst going back to 1999. He's been running the salary cap. He was also the interim GM, of course, in 2017. When, that, when they fired Reese. But he's been running the salary cap. We've been in salary cap hell twice now. And we're going to throw the reins to Kevin? Well, whoop de freaking do Scooby-Doo. Oh, Shaggy. No, we, we, we can't go that direction. We can't. We, 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 have to, we just have to leave that alone. Just, just go, go outside the organization. It doesn't work. Our fruit tree is dead. Do you think the Belichick tree is dead? Our internal fruit tree in regards to player development, scouting, general manager, cap, is also dead. It's been dead for years, and it's going to be dead again in 2022. It's just, it's just a hot freaking mess. And Kadarius Tony is back on the COVID list. And, and it's not the fact that he's back on the COVID list for the second time, but he's vaccinated, so it's going to be easier for him to get off the COVID list. But here's the thing. You already had COVID once. What the hell were you doing in California and Arizona that you got COVID again? And the ineptitude of the Giants, this is what I love. They didn't find out that he had COVID until they were mid-flight. So the Giants took off from L.A. without getting all the COVID results? What? I, I, I mean, is, is this a professional organization or a clown show? I, I'm beginning to think they're a clown show. How do you leave for a cross-country flight without making sure that everyone on that plane was tested? Not tested. How, how do you do that? What, I mean, what is... Okay. We're not even going to get into that. Leonard Williams, of course, looks like he's going to be out for, for a while for the elbow. He may potentially be out for the season. I'm not saying that's going to be the greatest loss in the world with his five and a half sacks. People are going to point out his 60 tackles, but you know what? They have 60 tackles because when the other team runs at you consistently, you do not stop the run. I hope to God you have 60 tackles. I hope so. But, you know, I mean, he reverted right back to what I said he would be. King of the almost sack. 
You can't be what you were the first five years of your season, have a career year in six, and then think to yourself, that's my career arc. That's what I'm going to be for the rest of my career. No, you're going to be what you were the first five years of the season. Why was I the only person to see this? Let's just throw more gasoline on the fire by just giving more people money. That's what, that's what kills me. The news is coming out that uh, Daniel Jones is not expected to play versus Dallas. This is coming from a bunch of different sources, they're saying. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, we'll find the validity of it. The validity, the validity of it. The, the issue is that after another visit with a spinal spe- specialist, Daniel Jones is not expected to be cleared to play this week. Per sources, nothing is ruled out beyond that, so it's expected to remain a week-to-week evaluation. If that's the week-to-week evaluation, just shut him down. Just shut it down. You got four games left. What are you going to do? Go in with three games left? Are you going to really think you're going to evaluate this kid after three games? Because the other two and a half years, that didn't count. That didn't count whatsoever. And can we just get rid of Mike Lennon? Can we just start Jake? And I'm tired of the stupidity I see on Twitter with, he only knows the quarter of the playbook. You can't start him. These, again, are people that never played the sport. Yeah, you can. And there's been plenty of quarterbacks that came off the street that actually had great games, even rookies that have done it. Tyler Heineke, I'm looking at you. Wasn't even the league, didn't even know the playbook. But hey, that, that could never happen. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you just, you just want to look at this team and, and you, just, you just think to yourself, what could go wrong next? What, could, what literally could go wrong? And you don't want to even think that because of the fact that you have to laugh because you know something probably will. Every time my phone goes beep, I assume it's something for the Giants and it's something and something has just gone horribly wrong. <laughs> That's usually my thought process. Oops, the Giants, something went wrong. I mean, you, you should have enough idea of an evaluation of Daniel Jones. And I'm tired of hearing about the offensive line. Plenty of teams have a terrible offensive line. Giants had a 32nd ranked offensive line in 2011 and like no running game. And they won, and they won a Super Bowl. <laughs> but that's okay. That's all right. But we had to sit there and listen to Joe Judge now pontificate about all the wonderful things that the Giants have been doing. All the wonderful things that's been going on. And I love it because people are like, well, and, and, and the thought process is that the last two hires didn't work out. And you got rid of them two seasons, but so you have to give this guy more time. Okay. So there's going to be a huge leap in year three when there was no leap in year two. Cincinnati, Zach Taylor. Bengals are seven and six. After they were two and 14 and four and 11. Yep. Okay. I agree with that. Arizona went five, 10 and one. They went eight and eight. And now they're 10 and three. Those are the examples people are going to use. Then they're going to say, well, Jimmy Johnson went one to 15 first season on seven and nine. Ron Rivera, best, ex- you know, another good example to say he was six and 10 and he went seven and nine. But do you see the, the hidden factor there? Those people went up in wins. They went up in win totals. Cincinnati won two extra games. The Cardinals won three extra games. While Ron Rivera won one extra game. Yep, that's true. And then Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson won six extra games. We are going the opposite direction. And then people will point out Bill Walsh went with two and 14 and six and 10. Again, he went two and 14, then six and 10. He won two additional, he won, excuse me, four additional games. And then people will point out, well, Tom Coughlin. And like I said, I, I pointed out Bill Parcells, 312 and 1. They went 9 and 7 the next year. But these are examples of brilliant head coaches who actually progressed in year two. Joe Judge, in his ineptitude, has made his team look worse going into year two. I'm just a little also pissed off that the Cardinals lost. That's my team now. That's my guys now, the Cards. Let's go Cardinals. Let's go Cardinals. Kyler Murray. What a guy. James Conner after, after being unceremoniously released from, from Pittsburgh. Showing his wares. Got another big touchdown yesterday. Yeah, they lost to the Rams. But, they're, but the Rams are going to be there. The Rams are going to be tough. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna give us a run for the playoffs. The Rams are going to be tough out there. 
Or maybe I'm not going to be a Cowboys fan. Maybe I get a Parsons jersey. I mean, that's what I got to do. I don't know. I got to figure it out. I got to figure out what fan, I'm, what team I'm going to root for the rest of the season. Because evidently, this dumpster fire is not, not worth rooting for. Because the stupidity abound is, is, just, is just over. We need to bring in a new GM. We need to bring in someone outside this organization. And we have to. We got to give them all the power in the world. Change out everything. The microcosm is this team is giving up 59 points with under two minutes in the half. That's the microcosm of this team. That, to me, is inexcusable. That, to me, is bad coaching. That, to me, is undisciplined. You could say things are flukes, but if you actually break down the plays, you could see the mistakes. And you want to sit there and tell me there's positive about this team. I'm trying not to be negative because everyone's like, you're so negative. How come when I was so negative before I turned out to be right about almost everything? Except for Slater. <laughs> That's from one idiot out there who likes to remind me you got Slater wrong. Yeah, I admit it. I got Slater wrong. But I also believe in the fact that if you took Slater and put him on this team, he would not be the same Slater that he is behind the duck or in front of the duck. Your quarterback can make all the difference. The duck had a horrid, horrid line last year. Yeah, and look what he did his rookie year. He didn't do it in three games. He did it through an entire season. It's not that difficult, guys, to look into the giant mirror or window when you step outside and look in to this organization and see it's a dumpster fire. We're going to do a live stream today at four with Dom from Menifal talking across the pond and back. Talking all about the Giants, ranting about the Giants, having a lot of fun because it's always a good time with Dom. I like doing afternoon streams. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to try to do less videos and more streams because streams are easier to do. <laughs> streams are easier to do. Because you guys basically give me the content. I could, I could think, you know, that's not true. I could think of content all day long. <laughs> I could do like 15 videos a day if I had to. All about the New York Giants. I like to talk about other things, though, one day. I like to talk about other stuff. Got an announcement coming up in the next couple days about my radio gig. Because everyone wants the, everyone wants the melonious sounds of Tim from Online Big Blue on their station. And no, it's not WFAN in New York. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> I've heard that rumors, but it's not. But join us today at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Dom from NFL Cross, NFL Talk from Across the Pond and Back, talking Giants, talking this dumpster stuff fire, and having a good time. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you can subscribe, ring that button, you know what it means. That'd be awesome.